Uh, all right, we've got video coming through to the room now. Uh, just checking you guys can hear us, hopefully. Awesome. Yep. Cool. Uh, we'll kick it off. So as people are still coming back from the break, I am Ghost the Sammy from Samoid Coin. Uh, we are the ambassador of Solana, and this panel is all about bringing some of the biggest builders on Solana to you. So you might actually be on other chains or not familiar with it. Uh, so what we thought we'd do is we all wanted to be here in person. Uh, we are all in Lisbon a couple of weeks ago, but because it is... Thanksgiving in the States. We had to do this virtually. Uh, but we have the pleasure of having uh, Crass Kitty from DGen Ape Academy. We have Solana Steve from DGen Trash Pandas and B&J Studios. And we have Nom, who is the founder of Monk Dow. I feel bad because I gave Nom a title and I didn't do that in the intro to the others. So uh, Crass is actually the co-founder of DAA and Steve is the creative director of B&J Studios. So uh, welcome, guys. Uh, what we want the pa everyone in the audience to actually get out today is two things. We want to let you know what we think about the Australian ecosystem and what our involvement in Australia is. And then two, we actually want you to get involved or how you can get involved in either any of our communities or actually in Solana itself. So what I thought the best way to do it, you might not know us or might not be familiar. I want to go to the panellists that are actually streaming in and you guys tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to Australia. So... You guys can't see probably the order we've got you on in the screens. Uh, so, Crass, you are on our left, so we'll kick off with you. Uh, excellent. I love going first. Uh, hi, I'm Crass. Um, a lot of our team is actually based in, in, in that regional area, uh, not Australia, but the other island nearby. Uh, and, you know, it, it's been a really big influence for our project at Degenerate uh, Ape Academy. Um, like, our, our latest... Uh, collection is actually drop bears, which if you're native to Australia, you should know what those are. Uh, and um, I know what they are now, so because of that. So that's that's my short and sweet intro and my connection to Australia. They are scary little animals that fall out of trees on tourists. Uh, Specifically yeah, tourists. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, Crass. Uh, Steve, you're in the middle uh, of my Brady Bunch screen, so uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, I guess I'll start with the, because Crass... I guess we'll do a roundabout about ourselves, but the connection, I'll start with the connection to Australia. Um, at Trash Pandas, we like to we like to take pride in the fact that we really try to focus on hiring. We've learned to hire through our community and it's ended up being uh, really, uh, really good results. And quite frankly, a lot of the uh, artists that we have found from within our community are actually uh, right down there in Australia and someone that we actually have uh, on our on our team of creators and uh, somewhat as a creative director at Degenerate Trash Pandas is Solfeen. He is a uh, native to Australia and now a dear friend of mine and I get to work hand in hand uh, with guys at the land down under almost every single day now. And and you guys over there at Samo, of course. Up in my Samo shirt today. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I didn't pay for that promotion, guys. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Nom, do you want to give us a little bit of an intro? Yeah, uh... So I guess my best connection to Australia uh, as the Canadian on the panel uh, is through experience playing rugby down south. Um, but for organizing everything through Monkey Dow, really what we want to do is make it so it's easy to be a decentralized community. Uh, what that means is a lot of evening meetings uh, trying to accommodate some of our board members and a few of our friends over in New Zealand as well. Um, Australia was the fifth continent that we threw events on, uh, most recently in September, and we're hoping to do a few more very soon. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so, look, I feel a little bit special because if we try and put panels together um, for Solana or any blockchain, you think, you, you know, you might get one or two speakers from each, but actually getting, I think, the three of these guys on screen and then obviously with Samoid Coin as well, it's like getting a powerhouse team. That we got really excited when we got to put this together to come into events like this for NFT Australia. We actually really want to invest in ecosystems like this. So we don't just talk about actually, you know, going out of our way to sponsor events like this so that we can have, you know, or everyone come together and learn from each other. But we want to make sure that we're not just having that hyper-localised area and us be isolated, but connect us to the rest of the ecosystem system as well. So uh, thank you so much for you guys actually jumping on, st uh, well, on stage with me virtually. Uh, we did say that I was going to totally go off script on this session. So I am going to give away merch at the same time while we're talking about some other things because we wanted to actually entertain you guys. Uh, so uh, who can t or who's actually heard of either of these three projects 
and the magic eating guys can't put your hands up. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what size top are you? Uh, medium. Medium. Do you want to start doing this for me? You'll be able to find it. Medium. Uh, who has a phantom wallet? Uh, in the red. Do you want to help Jay as well? Yep, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, who doesn't have a phantom wallet? Who wants to install one later and learn how to use it and use SPL tokens? Down the very back uh, with a hand up in the white, can you just make sure you see the boys and get a top? Cool. Uh, who owns a Solana monkey business, DJ and Trash Panda, or a DAA? Well done, you've made a good investment. Uh, it's not investment advice. Uh, so <laughs> let's actually go back to the panel. So uh, some of the stuff we actually spoke about today is that everyone's been talking about different things that are on uh, to coming to the NFT communities. Obviously, this event is very NFT focused. And uh, when we actually went through a different panels, we're speaking about trait swapping, lots of different things. In our world that we do in Solana, this is not something new to us. Lots of projects have been pioneering this and different projects including the boys that are helping me out the front here, also do trait swapping on their project, which you can hear from tomorrow. But ingrained in a lot of the things we do and how we actually have our communities or foster them so that they are able to personalise it or in, uh, what the PFP or NFT means to them is really important. Um, I wanted to touch on... We'll start with Steve. Tell us a little bit about Cupcake and what you guys are doing because then I actually want to go over to Crass because I know there's some cool stuff coming there. Um, and maybe we're actually able to talk about some alpha and stuff that's coming. Yes, absolutely. Um, so Cupcake is uh, the protocol uh, under B&J Studios. Uh, it's essentially a way of onboarding uh, seamlessly to Web3 using uh, smart contract enabled NFC tags. Uh, we've been very fortunate to work with projects like DAA and Crass. Uh, where uh, they've been activating gold stars, and I'm sure she'll tell you guys more about that. But uh, so far uh, with Cupcake, we've activated multiple events. Uh, Tommy Hilfiger at New New York Fashion Week, Lollapalooza just this past summer. And it's essentially uh, a way to, for brands to enhance the experience with consumers and consumers to get a better experience uh, from an NFT activation without even knowing it. Uh, it's seamless and just you just use your phone number. And to date, I think just in the last, we're very new, three, four months in, and I've already been shipping tags to over 30 countries around the world and enabling creators to program NFTs in these tags and onboard web uh, individuals into Web3 just using a phone number and creating a wallet. So um, if, if, if that makes sense, nuts and bolts of it, Cupcake's really hard because it's, it's so limitless what you can do and what you can program into these NFC tags. Crass, obviously, touching on the gold stars, how you guys are using things to incentivize your community and really build connection. Uh, talk us through that. So I think I've personally, because I'm the only one on the team that programs the cupcake stickers, uh, programmed over 300 cupcake stickers at this time. Um, so it's been a, a lot of uh, tapping my phone to NFC-enabled stickers and then uh, you know enabling NFTs to be claimed for them. Um, you know... Steve was talking about how there's so many use cases that it's hard to explain what Cupcake is. So I'm going to give you a real life use case that makes a lot of sense um, and it's easy to understand, I hope. Uh, at Degenerate Ape Academy, we wanted to create a program that would reward our holders. And so we did this um, really unique perspective called Gold Stars. It's not a token. It's not a staking reward. It is only earned in three different methods. And one of them involves Cupcakes and we call that Field Trips. Um, Field trips are our initiative to go to events and put up like these stickers all around the event. You'd tap it with your phone and you would go to claim a gold star voucher. Um, there's like different amounts on them. There's different ones everywhere. My business card, for example, it has a cupcake enabled NFC where you can claim a business card that's also redeemable for gold stars. Um, the really fascinating thing here is that events are just the first part of, you know, the goal. We're actually looking to create a, uh, the first of its kind geocaching slash Pokemon Go style uh, worldwide global phenomenon where you'll be able to go with your friends, whether or not you hold a Degeneverse asset or not, and claim these cupcakes uh, stickers uh, for gold stars, and they'll be activated at certain times. We'll turn them on and off, and you'll have to track when they're on and then get your crew together and go on a little raid. 
So um, that's just one of the ways you can earn gold stars, and, and I think it's probably the most relevant to what we're talking about right now. Yeah, awesome. And, it, and for anyone that was in the Vulture panel when he was talking earlier, obviously once we got to the Q&A section, we're talking about NFT projects and whether they try and issue a token that we don't know the compliance or how that's actually going to work. And really, does that benefit the community? Or is it just going to peak, you know, hype for no reason? I think what you guys are doing, Crass, is really creative because it means that you're not having to get in into any regulatory issues, but you're still giving that same incentive to the community and actually able to take the tech from just being digital to digital or, you know, trying to bridge that gap. Because at the end of the day, as we all speak about, is that people don't want to know they're using blockchain. They don't want to know they're necessarily using NFTs. So what you're actually doing is you're taking a lot of that friction out of it by the way that you guys have actually spun the cupcake technology. Uh, rather than maybe do the cupcake thing just yet, Nom, when we actually talk about activating communities and how that's really important, obviously Monk Dow, I think if anyone's familiar with Solana, Monk Dow are probably one of those mainstays and one of the OGs that a lot of people actually look at. And when we talk about, you know, how do you get connected with really good communities and, and who's the brains trust of Solana, um, as a collective, they're, they're actually quite a strong force. And, and Nom, do you want to talk us how you've actually fostered that at the moment and what's happening? Yeah, I think the easiest way to do it is just keep going to panels and uh, convincing the other speakers to purchase monkeys. That's been my, my go-to strategy for the last little bit. Um, I think I'm at least three for four right now on this one. Um, yeah, it worked for me. <laughs> but basically what we want to do inside of MonkeyDAO is be the organization that everybody on Solana goes to, whether they're looking to start a project, find something to invest in, or are just looking for people uh, to be a part of. Um, so the, the Cupcake team, the DLI and DAA team are doing some fantastic things around technology. Um, what we want to do is be the community organization that regardless of what team you're on and what you're building for, we can still figure out a way to integrate with you and we can still find a way to get the amazing stuff that you are building out to our users. Um, we try to look at ourselves like a combination of Soho House, uh, an investment club, Y Combinator, any buzzword that sounds good on a pitch deck, let's be honest, but we want to make sure that if you are coming together as uh, someone looking to be a part of an organization, or you want to learn something or you want to make something, we're the people that you go to first. Um, and so over the course of the last year and a half, that coalesces into a lot of IRL events that uh, comes into a lot of organization around both artists and DeFi protocols, you know, everything from NFT traders to people looking to write proof collective research reports. Uh, we want to make sure basically like if you're interested in Solana, we're your one-stop shop and hopefully you can branch out into all the other amazing things that people are building on this chain. Use my own uh, mic back on. That's actually something that really resonates with me as well because uh, at Samway Coin, we, um, as we say, we're the ambassador of Solana. I have one of the best jobs because I get to go and talk, find out about what everyone else does and talk more about what they do than what we do. It's really great. But the rest of the team itself is really focused on, like we said, is that how do we actually get people in? How do we remove friction from, you know, whether it's a normie or someone coming on board? And then actually, how do we educate them? So everyone talks about education. No one wants to pay for it or no one can invest in it. So that's something that we try and tackle from our end um, with our resources because we may say that, you know, we have a meme coin. But a meme coin itself is a great marketing. It cuts through. Everyone really understands dog money. So dog money they get really quick. But what you don't realise is that on Solana, given that we have a lot of DeFi protocols, we have a lot of lending protocols, we have all sorts of NFT things, we're doing cool things with Cupcake. Because of that really fast speed of transaction, low cost, we can do all sorts of creative things. So if you imagine you actually get Samo into your wallet, the great thing is once you've got it, you could just leave it as a meme coin. That's fine. But instead, that itself can be an education tool. You may turn around and go onto Tulip, generate yield, which is one of our yield generators on Solana, you may turn around and go and actually lend it or deploy it on Radium. You'll actually learn how AMAMs work. You may swap it on Orca. So just having that token itself becomes an education tool that people actually start understanding about DeFi and all sorts of things. And then we start layering on education, like we said, is that projects like this in a lot of chains don't necessarily work coherently or cohesively, I should say. Um, but you see that all of us actually have activations together and at the same time, because that's how we strengthen the ecosystem and how we all learn together. Uh, we're talking about Cupcake. Steve, should we do a demonstration? Let's do it. Let's do a demonstration so, live. Yeah. Who um, wants to see how Cupcake works? Uh, the row behind the Magic Eden guys. 
Did you put your hand up? No? There's, oh, there's two rows of magic eating people. All right. So everyone put your hand up again with your own shirt. Uh, boys, do you want to turn around and give a dog bone? Now, there's going to be an NFC sticker on there. All you need to do is actually tap the NFC sticker. On this activation, instead of an NFT, what you're going to get is 6,969... I'll get my numbers right. That sounds like a cool Web3 number, yeah? 6969 six, Samo. Someone else put their hand up. And again, do another. Cool. So, all you need to do, tap the actual NFC. What it'll do is it'll actually load up a link for you that'll go to the Cupcake app uh, online. Uh, if you don't have a Phantom Wallet, don't worry. What it's there to do is actually remove the friction. So, it'll turn around and actually put a non-custodial wallet for you straight away. You can claim with a mobile phone number if you wanted, and then if, once that's actually loaded into your wallet, you can transfer it if you set up a phantom wallet or anything else like that. So what it means is that we can do activations like we did at Lollapalooza, and you can have someone that's not crypto-native be onboarded in 10 seconds. Uh, Steve, do you want to talk about how else you're actually using Cupcake to onboard people, maybe the merch? Yes, absolutely. Um... Yes, the merch is actually a great example. So uh, just this past summer, we actually did a digital and physical release where members of the Generate Trash Panda community uh, minted these dumpsters. Uh, no one knew what the dumpsters were for, uh, but lo and behold, after the mint, uh, they were actually able to redeem these dumpsters for a digital version of the hoodie and submit their address and their shipping information for a physical version of the hoodie. The digital versions were uh, able, you, the users could apply them to their Trash Panda PFPs. And the physical versions, which are still actually getting manufactured and about to ship soon for the holiday, uh, would then come with a NFC tag in the sleeve. The NFC tag in the sleeve would then actually, when the user taps it, brings the original dumpster NFT that was once turned over or burned for the digital version of the hoodie now returns to the user via the cupcake tag. Um, and this is just one of the many ways that you can implement uh, NFC tags into merch and interact with consumers after the purchase. Now, once this NFC tag is actually in the merchandise and there's a wallet there, we can now interact, we can airdrop, we can send them things to this tag, we can play games with these with these tags and create new game mechanics and new ways to interact with uh, the users unlike any before. Who thinks that's pretty cool? Put your hand up. All right, we need to give out some t-shirts. Grab a pile more. Keep your hands up if you think it's pretty no. cool. If you think it's shit, just... All right, wait. Uh, no, but it is cool. So a lot of the things we can actually do is we turn around and like we said, is we remove that friction so that we can actually normalise a lot of these things that may seem quite complicated for some people. Turn around and actually build it into merchandise. That's great. As Crass said, you know, Pokemon Go was a freaking crazy thing in Australia. I remember walking around and seeing everyone in Melbourne with their heads down walking into traffic. Imagine if everyone's actually walking around looking for cupcake stickers for DJ Nape Academy. Uh, Nom and... Uh, Monk Dao are just famous for their dinners because they bring brilliant minds together. But instead of actually having a POAP, app, imagine if it was a little bit more interactive. So rather than just typing something in, you actually had to go and do activations at the dinner to turn around and tap so that you can actually then have that um, proof of attendance. So there's all sorts of really cool things. And as we said, one of the things at the end of this session, trying to cram four people into a 30 minute panel is super hard. But what we did want to say is how you actually get involved in some of the stuff we do. So I want to go back to the panel one by one. And just from your perspective, if it's Solana itself, if it's your project, we've got um, people from all corners of the Australian ecosystem here when it comes to NFT and blockchain. What would be your advice? Uh, start with Crass again. Um, you know, I think if you're trying to get involved in the Degeneverse as a whole, uh, pandas are a great entry point, and on top of that, gold stars are like the entry point before that. So pay attention to our social media and, you know, the different methods that we publish gold stars. Um, field trips is, like I said, just one of them. The other methods are, uh, you know, digital field trips. We have to go do digital activations, and you don't have to hold to get these. Um, if you're looking to contribute more actively to the project, uh, shoot me a DM. And uh, my DMs are open on Twitter, and I'm, I'm happy to talk to anybody who wants to get involved in Solana or wants to get involved in uh, NFTs in general. Um, from my side of things, 
everything that Chris said at the same exact time, there's so many different projects on Solana and the barrier to entry is, is, is very small. Um, and the communities are always willing to welcome in new members. Everyone's super friendly. And I think that's, uh, a lot of times I'm on Twitter spaces and I ask individuals who are newer to Solana, what's the one thing that surprised them the most? And it's how welcoming everyone is and how it's such a different experience than uh, any other NFT community experience I've ever had. And last but not least, go to Hacker House. Um, the, the, the world tour has been released and Australia has been gifted with a Hacker House because last year there was like a bajillion of them all over almost every week. Now there's only, I think, around a dozen or less and Australia has been blessed with one. So do not miss it. It's one of a kind and you will meet incredible people there that could change your life like it did with meeting Crass and um, and Ghost over here. You, you know when Thank someone you, like drops the alpha or the bomb for the next slide before the slide appears? Uh, that's exactly what Steve's just done. So we might circle back to that, but um, we'll get him to yeah, replay the enthusiasm yeah. and we'll get him to amp it up another 10. Uh, Nom. <laughs> ah, Steve's just too excited about the hacker. I, was, I think I'm going to be going to 10 of them so far is what I built out the, the schedule for this uh, this week. So for Monkey Dow specifically, uh, JPEGs are expensive and not necessarily the best entry point for everybody that's involved into it. So if you're if you're looking to build a project, uh, Monkey Dow offers both a grant program for open source software as well as a venture investing arm in Monkey Ventures. So if you need help funding whatever you're looking to build, we would always love to chat and see how we can help out. If you're looking to get more eyes on your project, we run three weekly shows right now, highlighting things that are going on inside of the Solana ecosystem. Uh, we're always happy to figure out whatever partnerships are. And if it, you don't fall neatly into any of those buckets, I, again, like Kras says, I'm always happy to talk. I'm always excited to learn and find new things that I can bring towards monkeys to, to get their eyes onto it. Uh, I'm an IRL at Maxi for, for any of these, so I'm looking forward to being in Australia next year. Awesome. Uh, Nom and, the, like I said, the team, we were trying to get everyone here, but being Thanksgiving and everything else is a bit hard just on timing, but we'll blame Greg for uh, that. Um, before I actually do give my thoughts on the how to get involved and stuff as well, uh, like I said, I'm going to reiterate it because I just chucked on a, a hat. I felt bad because we've given the cupcake demonstration from obviously b and Studios, um, so you guys have seen there. I am wearing the DAA hat uh, and I am wearing my Monk Dow wristbands, so I uh, just thought I'd make sure the actual panellists knew that uh, before I went. Uh, but if you're talking about how to get involved as well, uh, from the SAMO side of things, um, we're going to talk about Hacker House in a sec, but it's specifically from our project. Like we said, crypto's hard. It's not easy to get involved and it's not easy to find the right information. So. We were working on something for quite a long time and a few weeks ago, we have just seeded our Samo DAO. So at the time, we gave them a million dollars. Because like we said, education is hard um, and obviously if you go to VCs and anyone else, no one wants to pay for education and it's hard to actually look at a return on investment. So we actually seeded the DAO with the sole purpose that they are to help on board uh, and also to educate. So if you want to get involved, they will also turn around and help you write research papers, you can read research papers that are there, or you may want to get bounties and stuff. So. Uh, we are going to put our money where our mouth is, uh, and that's the type of things you get when you have communities like this. So given the time, I won't go too much into that. We have another Solana panel tomorrow, so if you want to hear more about the actual Samo DAO, we may talk about it with the guys in real life. Uh, what we did want to do, and I don't know whether we got confirmation, we're going to go to a slide, hopefully, for the AV guys. Without notice. While that slide loads up, you probably know what I'm going to talk about because Steve's already dropped the bombshell. Uh, if you do want to get involved, Solana is actually bringing Hacker House to Australia. Uh, so, these are a five-day event. If you are a dev or dev inclined or a founder and want to get involved, registrations are already open. Please go to Solana slash events or solana.com slash events. There will be the registration for Melbourne Hacker House. So, you put in your interest to attend. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. It is free. But what will happen is once you put in your interest, you'll get confirmation closer to the event. So a fully funded five-day immersive event where builders actually come together. Um, you can look at some of the videos and stuff for the last few uh, this year. 
uh, but next year, this will be in February, it will be in Port Melbourne, um, and it is really impressive to see what we are doing with investing in the Australian ecosystem. And things like this, and how we all get together and learn from each other, are the types of things that you should, I really encourage you guys to get involved with, okay? I think I've done pretty well with time. Uh, AV guys, do we still have the guys on the screen? Yeah, cool. Cool. Um, I think that's it, guys. Did I, did I miss anything? I know that we crammed everything in. I wanted to say thanks, didn't get to see you in person. Uh, we really appreciate it in Australia having people like you guys actually jump on. I can't say it enough. Uh, but yeah, hopefully next time we do NFT Fest 2023, uh, we may have you here in person. Sounds like a plan. Cool. Thanks, Definitely. guys. Definitely. Just not doing Thanksgiving week. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone give him a round of applause, please. Thanks all for your time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Amazing. Love you, Ghost. <laughs>